Um, implementing cooperative link diagnostic. So diagnostic is usually a part of uh, features which are not very good implemented or not always uh, requested by uh, different customers. So you'll need sometimes uh, push this uh, functionality by ourselves like a hobby or uh, as a company. Uh, so you'll gather some experience here in this field. And in uh, case of uh, industrial uh, networking and even in automotive as well, we have a lot of situation where many things can go wrong. And if they go wrong, uh, it will be hard to identify exact location or exact reason of what is going on, especially if you deal with something like uh, standard 10 base t one l which is capable to support up to 2,000 meters of copper twisted cable, twisted pair. Uh, in this case, if you see there is uh, on the picture an infield attempt to repair something and it will mostly work, but probably will reduce the link quality. Uh, so usually you should be able to somehow identify what is going wrong and uh, how to find the exact location for this. There's other problems like uh, they have to deal with different kinds of uh, sensors and actuators, which uh, do not have any kind of user interface. They are closed boxes. Uh, so if we are not able to take a diagnostic from both sides, then it will be harder to find the problem. Um, we have a lot of different kind of uh, environment issues like mechanical or thermal stress. And uh, oft we have to deal with different kind of animals like in building automation or in agriculture. So if some animal uh, like the taste of cables, <laughs> it will be very bad for us. So if things are broken, we have a lot of different variants of broken. Uh, in case of twisted pair, we have some time just one cable inside of twisted pair is cut or is open. Sometimes complete twisted pair is open. Sometimes we have short within pair, short between pairs, short to the ground. On the picture, we see even more examples like one of five is, is damaged to, to some kind of uh, lightning or whatever. Or we have uh, damage between phi and the Mac or just not proper configuration. All of this has different pictures and all of this uh, potentially can be identified by software, but we just need to extend software and extend tools supporting them. On this picture, we have I split a typical link to three zones. Uh, the first one, Mac and Phi, can be covered by self-test, which is support by current kernel for many different Macs and Phi's. And usually it is enough to use ETH tool with uh, this example as provided uh, in the picture. Uh, this will run, uh, this will, uh, the CPU will generate some packets and the kernel self-test infrastructure will uh, enable loop back inside of the Mac. So the packets generated from CPU will go to the CPU back for, uh, through the Mac. Then it will enable loop back inside of the Phi and disable loop back inside of the Mac. So it will be able to send packets through the Mac through the Phi and back again. So you'll be able to identify if there's something damaged between Mac and Phi. Uh, but uh, this tells uh, will probably not be able to identify anything what is related to the twisted pair in between. To uh, see issues on the middle part, 
we can use HH tools cable test, which will probably identify many different issues like short, cut, open, or whatever. And in case of uh, working link uh, and provided uh, provided support from FICE side, we can use SQI uh, value, which is provided by ETH tools. SQI is a signal quality index, uh, which will just show numbers like uh, from zero to seven, the biggest number is the best quality and the lowest number is the worst quality. Uh, in my uh, homemade test, I needed to do a lot of damage to the cable to got uh, reduced quality, but probably it will be affected by some kind of uh, electrical radiation as well, if, depending on the length of the cable and so on. Um, this existing uh, ways of diagnostic can be potentially extended. For example, potentially we can extend the self-test to run not just between local Mac and Phi, but we can run include the uh, remote Phi to this test, which would make things uh, even simpler and better to test and uh, reduce the testing time, diagnosing time. Uh, to be able to implement something like this, we need some ways to communicate with the other sites, other system. Potentially, we can just use SSH or something like this, uh, but uh, this will be not always uh, usable. For example, especially if we uh, need, uh, if we have some kind of bootloader or some reduced system configuration and there is no high level protocols available or working on this stage we'll we'll need somehow some different ways to communicate with other system except of working ethernet uh, or working ip on top of this the same is about um, cable testing uh, usually the cable testing uh, works fine if uh, the remote system is completely down or the link is down. But uh, it will work not so reliably uh, if uh, other system is working and the FI on the remote system is working in auto negotiation state so it will send pulses which are which will disturb uh, our cable testing in this case we will have some kind of results but these results are not 100 percent reliable potentially it is even not good to use cable testing at all if we can't trust these results uh, in this case we can potentially uh, introduce some ways to communicate with other system uh, to solve this problem. But to, before we're solving it, we need to understand how cable testing is working and how auto negotiation is working. Uh, usually we use for cable testing a technology called tight domain reflectometry. And on this example, on this picture, there's a laboratory setup with a pulse generator on the top and oscilloscope in the middle. So the pulse generator will send a pulse which will be captured by a oscilloscope at the first stage. Uh, if it's big enough, you'll probably see the first pulse on this uh, picture. And then uh, at the end of the cable, if there is uh, nothing connected, then we'll get a reflection of this pulse uh, and we'll be able to capture uh, the reflection by a oscilloscope as well. And uh, most files, not all of them, but most of them support this technology. So we usual file will be able to get a precision of like 80 centimeters. And in case of 2000, meta cable 
80 centimeters is just not a big deal. Here's two examples how this technology is working. For example, we can see on the left picture, the first pulse uh, was generated by the phi or by the pulse generator. We have, uh, we can see the second pulse, which has uh, lower amplitude and some uh, deformation. And in this case, we can recognize by the pulse form and pulse polarity that this was a open case. There is just nothing attached to the cable or it was uh, damaged. In the second picture, we have a pulse with a negative pulse view, which uh, is a short ca case. And uh, the file will be able to recognize the short and open separately. Some advanced files can even recognize the form of a reflection and uh, can see some more issues like liquid damage and so on. So how this interfere with uh, typical auto negotiation? For auto negotiation, we are using technology like called uh, fast link pulses or all the, in, by all the uh, Ethernet types, we have a net link pulses. And the word pulses already says something that uh, we have extra source of pulses on the wire, which is sent from opposite side. Many files are able to recognize, to differentiate between own pulses and other pulses. But in most cases, the file will just say, okay, I'm, I'm failed. I can't recognize uh, anything what is suitable for the test. Some files will just say some random things like it is open or, or nothing is connected or there's everything fine and there's other system is connected. But these results are not 100% reproducible. So it's not very usable for diagnostic. So if we have two types of broken, one type is uh, completely broken. So it is good for cable testing and other type is not completely broken. So you have some kind of uh, signal sources from other side. It can be auto negotiation pulses or it can be even worse. It can be a manually configured link and manually configured link with uh, clock so clock provider mode this will be the worst thing which uh, can happen because uh, we won't be able to silence it anyhow uh, for auto negotiation case which is mostly used in many cases um, i have a, a proportion to exploit or to use remote fault signal remote fault flag uh, to request a silence window and the wire. So how this can work? This is not a new idea. This flag exists already for many years, as long as Ethernet specific specification exists. And here's one more example where uh, this was reintroduced for 10 gigabit uh, links by, and discussed by Huawei. And at the picture, we can see a two direction link sending and receiving. And the system on the left side was able to detect that something wrong is on the receiving side and uh, notified a local system by sending the local fault flag. So the local system is able to start broad broadcasting over auto negotiation, the remote fault flag. And both systems will be able uh, to have uh, similar information that link is broken. We need to do something about this. Uh, I expect that this will work uh, for twisted pair, uh, at least for industrial cases, because uh, auto negotiation work at uh, lower frequency 
a lot lower than usual uh, Ethernet link, than working Ethernet link. And uh, science is defined already in existing IEEE standards. Uh, we can, we will, we will be not breaking existing standards, but we will be able to use them. And if you we'll deep, uh, go deeper to the standard, probably if you like to have some more pains, you'll be able to implement IP over AutoNIC. So how this is working? AutoNIC uh, uses uh, fast link pulses. This kind of pulses uh, have a boost form. Uh, so the boost is uh, two milliseconds long, uh, long and uh, uh, the time between each start of boost is 16 milliseconds. Within the boost, we have a predefined interval between uh, pulses. So if we have an uh, interval between pulses of uh, 125 microseconds, then it is a zero. If we have an extra pulse be in between of these two pulses, then it is a one. So in this way, we have encoding for some kind of information. This information is described inside of IEEE standard. And uh, in case of Ethernet, we'll see the first part of uh, this bit field, which is a selector field, and it is describing actually uh, currently used technology. Uh, for example, Ethernet or something else. Um, the next part, R0 till R6, is a technology ability field, which is describing currently available or supported technology by the link partner. For example, on the initial state, it was 10 bit and 100 Mbit, and uh, probably flow control. For more advanced files with uh, new types of Ethernet and more speed, we'll have to use more pages to show uh, ability of gigabit links and so on. Within the first page, we have two extra bits which are interesting for this use case. The first one is D13 called RF, and the second one is D15, which is NP. RF means remote fault and is uh, designed to notify uh, remote system about some fault issues which was detected by our local system. Uh, but uh, one bit is not specific enough. Sometimes we need to provide even more information. This is defined uh, within IEEE uh, standard as well. So if we are using RF flag together with next page, which has predefined uh, fields number for show error, current error state, maybe we are able to use standard uh, support defined by standard error variants. Uh, but there are room for more things. So we are able to do uh, vendor specific definitions or vendor specific pages. And uh, probably as Linux, we are able to use Linux on vendor specific definition and provide something like uh, please silent auto NIC for X amount of time or uh, please uh, enable uh, remote loopback on the remoteify. Uh, so we're able to test complete link. Uh, from one system. Potentially, there's uh, potentially room for more things. So if you have some ideas, you are welcome. Please write me. Um, these pages uh, are described like following. So if we want to 
learn more about this, you'll need to search for message page encoding and unformatted page encoding. Message, message page encoding will have uh, will use some uh, bits to notify about exact page formatting which is following. There is a lot of predefined uh, uh, message codes which should be used. And if we are using our own message code for uh, vendor specific implementation, they'll have unformat code field. So we are able to use uh, 11 bits for any information what we are willing to provide. In case it is not enough for our use case, uh, many modern files are able to provide extended message page, which has a bit more bits as a typical next page. Initial implementation I have sent uh, the version uh, one patches uh, I have sent to the NetDev mailing list and got already some feedback. Uh, my initial implementation was based on uh user space so user space made all decision and uh, setting uh, remote flag uh, remote fault flag uh, but uh, it was decided that we'll go for the for now uh completely to the kernel part and if you want to see this initial implementation you can follow this link or scan this qr code this qr code is using this link so i'll give you some time if you want to scan it <laughs> and in case you have some questions critique comments please you are welcome you can start now So the question right now, which I got online is, are you adding a common interface to ETH tools to show the conclusion of the test? Um, yes, this will be way to go. Uh, currently, I have no decision about the user space interface, how exactly this will be implemented. But uh, as soon as I'm ready, uh i think there will be a discussion discussion how to implement this yes we will need some something to, uh, for ath tools as well is it uh, answering your question <laughs> anyone else So if there's no more questions, we can take a break. Otherwise, you can contact me personally.